What is up, y'all? My apologies if you can hear my air conditioner blasting. It is 104 degrees outside, and it doesn't seem to want to get cool enough in here for me to turn the air conditioner off. Um, Recently, I was getting my guitars set up, and I decided to go ahead and swap the pickups between these two guitars right here behind me. I thought it'd be cool to make a video about why I decided to swap them and what I learned in the process. So first, I want to tell y'all about this hollow body. So during the 1970s, Ibanez was building a bunch of guitars that pretty much looked exactly like a lot of Gibson model guitars. Because of this, Gibson sues them, and now many players recognize these guitars as the lawsuit era of guitars. I got this one in 2012 from a friend of mine, Gino Matteo, and when I first got it, I think it still had the original Ibanez pickups, which, to be perfectly honest with you, didn't sound very good. This guitar, while it looks nice, isn't necessarily a very well-built guitar. It has a bolt-on neck and it had pretty cheap electronics. So around 2013, I decided to go ahead and swap those pickups out for a pair of burst buckers. Now, I had discovered burst buckers from playing them through different custom shop Les Pauls. They tend to be pretty common in the R series guitars. However, at the time, I didn't really realize why they weren't quite the right fit for this guitar. So I was doing some research into these pickups, and they have some interesting qualities that you won't find in a lot of other humbuckers. Gibson started creating burst buckers for their 59 burst reissue line of guitars. They were trying to recreate the sound of this legendary pickup known as the Patent Applied For or PAF Humbucker. These are the types of pickups that you'll find in any Gibsons from the 1950s through the early 1960s. Now the thing is with vintage pickups, none of them are going to be exactly the same because they were all made by hand and they didn't have computers or machines that could make these pickups to exact measurements every single time. As well at that time, the plastic manufacturer who made the bobbins for Gibson's pickups, which is the little plastic piece that holds the magnets if you ever look at a pickup without the cover on, they as well couldn't make those bobbins to exact measurements every single time. This would mean that some of the bobbins would have thicker plastic than others, and when you're winding a bunch of pickups at one time with a big machine, you're not necessarily going to notice those details. Some of the coils would get more wraps than others just because the plastic was thicker or thinner. As well, the Gibson factory workers at that time kind of had to eyeball when to stop the machine, and some rows of coils would get more wraps than others. Guitar making in that day wasn't as much of a science as it is now. So to truly recreate the sound of a vintage humbucker, Gibson designed these burst buckers to have an offset number of coil wraps. So if you look at a humbucker without the cover on, you'll see that it's made with two separate coils that are designed to work in sequence to cancel out the 60 cycle hum that a lot of pickups emit. In the burst buckers, one of those coils will have more copper wire in it than the other. The result is that it has a very different frequency response than a humbucker that has been wound evenly. To my ears, I noticed that it has a lot more bottom end, as well as a bit more bite on the top end. Now the reason why that's problematic in this hollow body is because unlike a real 345 or a 335, this guitar is completely hollow. And really, it doesn't need that added low end from the burst buckers. As well, the burst buckers just have a really drivey rock and roll kind of character to them. And I didn't feel like that was the right fit for a guitar that, to me, should have a lot warmer, creamier tones. So doing this research made me curious of what pickups had been installed in my Les Paul. It's a Les Paul R8, which means it's a 1958 historic reissue from 2001. And I found out that before mid-2002, Gibson was installing 57 classic humbuckers in all of its R8 series guitars. Now, the difference between the 57 classics and the burst buckers is that the 57 classics are wound evenly. And because they're wound evenly, they have a much more even frequency response. Now, initially, I really liked that in the Les Paul. That's kind of why I preferred the 58 reissues over the 59 reissues, because the 59s always sounded just a little too hot. However, now I feel like it makes much more sense to have the 57 classics in the hollow body and the burst buckers in the Les Paul, because the patent applied for pickups that Gibson was creating in 1958 are essentially the exact same pickups that they were were creating in 1959. 
So there's no reason to have an evenly wound set of pickups in that guitar if, historically speaking, that's not what they had. Which is why, in mid-2002, Gibson switched over to using burst buckers. Now, to me, the 57 Classics are much warmer. They're a much better fit for this hollow body. But I wanted to do a before and after for you guys to see what you think. I would recommend listening to this either in your car stereo or on a good set of speakers or with a good pair of headphones because the differences in the tone of the pickups is going to be pretty minute, but especially for you guitar players out there, you're definitely going to be able to hear it. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any favorite pickups you think I should check out. I'm going to do another video just showcasing this Les Paul that I have over there. And I will see y'all on the next one. Take it easy, guys.